Berserk Ha! Filling me with the power of the warrior this week as we got a phenomenal episode, people. Wow! What is up? It's your boy Infrared. Welcome to the Scott Report. Today I'm bringing you anime review of episode 9 of Berserk. Wow! Episode 9? Jeez! We only got three episodes to go and it's almost time for the fall. Where did the time go? Regardless of the fact, again, another great episode of Berserk and... Uh, it gets better and better every week. I really do hate that everybody decided to turn their back on this series as I've said it literally every video that they can nail the conviction arc there will be no worries and it will weather the storm and that it has done despite the animation, despite the things that they missed, just taking this at face value as a Berserk series, I must say that I am enjoying it. I love it. This episode was great. I liked it. I, I give this episode a top best best episode of this season of Berserk if we ever get another one, but that's another thing. So without further ado, let's get down to the breakdown of the episode. Starting off with Farnese actually being relieved of her duty as the commander of the Holy Iron Chain Knights by her father, Lord Vandemillion or Vandemillion. Basically, he wants her out of the Knights to shield her away from, you know, the savagery and the things that they're seeing and fear that it might change her. So this order is held down by Musgus himself. Well, not by Musgus, I'm sorry. This is um actually held down that she's being relieved of her duty. And what is the first thing that she does? She actually blames Serpico. She's kind of like, you told my father, didn't you? You told my father I like torturing and burning people. How could you? Well, yeah, you do. And Serpico, you know, he takes it like a troop. He basically takes his slaps that she gives him he just kind of, you know, bows his head and accepts his, basically his berate from Farnese for her losing this position. But she also says something to him that was really alarming by saying that no matter what happens, I am still your master. You swore your sword to me. So that got me wondering about things that was way back in Berserk Pass I don't remember from the manga anymore. Like, when Serpico's parents got killed, did he get taken in by Farnese's family and maybe raised as like a slave or like as a little brother to her? We won't know. We probably won't know too with um, the way these things are going. But that was very interesting as Farnese continues to be one of the most developed characters, if not in Berserk, but definitely in this arc as, again, something that I keep saying over and over, but it's the thing that you have to commend her for that is each episode, she begins to question her faith a little bit more or the faith that she believes in because the things that she's seeing, you just can't deny that it's happening. So that leads to the next thing with her actually getting the report of what happened in the cave with the heretics to Muscus. And she actually does, you know, say, yeah, they were full of drugs and everything like that. They were crazy. They were hallucinating. No, no, there was no demons there. They were just a whole bunch of crazy wish worshippers having a orgy type of party. So they deserve to be killed. So she decides to go along with that. But there's a lot of things with this episode that shows that Farnese is actually changing. Or maybe somewhere deep in, there is some type of goodness within her as Nina, oh my god, she couldn't even get past the basic torture. As they got ready to take her in, the torturers were mad. They were expected to do more to her. They was like, as soon as we started to rip off her fingernails, she squealed like a pig. Like, come on. I mean, I don't blame her, but this is fiction. Don't sell out on Costco like that. Take a little bit more pain, you know? But that's Berserk. Berserk always keeps it real, and Berserk is always going to bring you the realistic approach. It's like I said, if somebody started tearing my fingernail off, I probably squeal like a canary too, so I can't blame Nina. But on a fictional end, I'm like, come on, put up a better fight than that. So once they seen that, you know, Nina is like crying and breaking down, and she was just so afraid, you know, Farnese kind of looked a little bit like, man, that's kind of messed up. Then also for Musgus to now have Casca in his possession and he was about to well uh, torture her as well and Farnese is looking like this girl isn't in her right mind this isn't right you don't need to torture her because it's not going to do anything of course she didn't say that but that's what she was thinking in her head as Muscus got ready to actually take um Casca into like I think it's called an Iron Maiden it was like one of those coffins with the spikes in it he opens it up and a damn body just falls and flumps out of it I mean still alive it was just like rrr, rrr. But he puts Casca into the Iron Maiden to try to torture her to find out more about her. Especially when he sees the demon mark on her. He recognizes that. As the Maiden starts to close in closer on her. Thankfully, and this is a kind of weird time to say thankfully. 
the the mark on Casca's chest started to bleed, and you know the demons came out. It bust the casket open, and now everybody's full of demons. People are getting ate. You know, demons are going around killing everything. Muskus actually stayed back like a beast and decided to try to fight them on with the power of the Holy See and the faith that he feels within. While the rest of his troopers are making an escape for it, and of course, while this is going on, Gus is able to sneak into the tower with the help of. Luca, Isidoro, Puck, and everybody else. He cleanly sneaks into the tower with a little bit of deception by everybody else to distract some guards. He finds Farnese, pretty much takes her in and says, where's Casca? And she tried to deny it at first, but she knows Gus does not play. It didn't take him too much to say, girl, I'm serious. Tell me where he is. As she decides to take him to the torture chamber where Casca is, and Serpico decides to follow. Meanwhile, when that's going on and the goons are pretty much tearing everybody apart, Casca's actually protected and I, I can't hold this in any longer. I'm sorry anime only because I don't know how far into Berserk we're going to get or if we even see Berserk again. That thing that keeps showing up in front of Casca is actually her child. That little incubus thing we keep seeing, that's her child along with Guts, but it was corrupted by Griffith when he turned to Femto. So that's why it looks like that. I believe they touched on that before. I think at this point, at least as a reader, you knew what it was. But I don't think we're going to get that covered. So it was put like a shield over and protected her from the demons while everybody else was pretty much getting eaten up. Gus decides to sneak in and make his way to save her. And meanwhile, um, Isidoro and Luca, they go through the chambers and they're trying to save as many prisoners as they can because the Holy See decided to get out of here. Like, we're gone. We're going to save ourselves, get the prisoners. They do find Nina and then they're going to try to find Casca as well. However, they are confronted by not only the demons that are filling up the Tower of Conviction, but also Muscus who stops them as well. And also with them is Jerome, you know, the um, Holy See guard who fell in love with Luca. He's there with them as well. They try to make their escape. However, this leads to one of my best parts of the episode, besides the obvious part at the end, is the Skull Knight showing up once again. And not only seeing that that little creepy-eyed demon is making everything happen in this area, but he actually saves Luca as she was starting to fall over the cliff like everybody was trying to pick her up and save her. She just decides to let herself go. And the Skull Knight runs down the tower, catching her like a true hero, like a beast, saying, why did you give your life? Or why did you just jump? Why did you offer to die instead of fighting? And she says, this was the only way I could have saved my friends. So if I had to sacrifice myself, then so be it. And you can see a little bit of mutual respect coming from the Skull Knight to Luca. Again, another very well-developed character in this art. But he has to protect her against something. Now, I wonder what that is. So meanwhile, while that's going on, Gus decides to come in like the beast once again. That high starts hitting as he's going in because we find out that Muskus, it's something about him as him and his squad begin to power up to fight this evil with flapping wing actions. They all look kind of like pseudo angels now with wings coming out their backs. They're definitely demonic or supernatural or something of that sense. But Gus says they're not apostles. So... Did they get changed into what these things are? Like how that um, little creepy eye thing for changing people in the tunnel? Or is it something more? Either way, Gus does get to go in on a few people with the high o playing in the back before the episode ends. And now Gus is about to face down Musgus along with his torture guard, as I call them. And that ended the episode. And again, another phenomenal episode of Berserk. I gotta clap my hands for it as I haven't had... A bad experience with this series since maybe episode three and episode three was okay it's just it's good I, I can't say it I defend it I love it I love this berserk series I'm glad we got it and the thing is about berserk is that it's been so badly received by the community and the people that's watching it that we need to cherish these last few episodes that we're gonna get because we probably won't see berserk again the way this series got hung up to dry it in a way it deserves it um they could have gave us a cleaner presentation, but as I keep saying, it's still Berserk. The things that we love about Berserk is still there. It's just in an ugly wrapper, but once you open it up and get to the center of it, overall, you have a very enjoyable series in Berserk and in what this anime has given us with this Tower of Conviction arc. So overall, we're in a dilemma because it's getting a bad reputation, but it's so good. It was so good after those first two or three episodes 
that this is what we were looking for. If they would have gave us this type of beastiness beforehand, I think we would have been okay. Maybe they could still save this and give us a Lost Children arc in the OVA. At this point, I will take that. So guys, let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments. What do you think is going on with Musgus? Um, do you? He's not an apostle, so, how, so is he something else entirely or did something change him? I think that little monster thing changed him to what he is. Also, I know you guys are just as excited as I am to see Gus go in next week. I cannot wait for that battle. I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Guys, if you liked the video, go ahead and drop it a like. If you want to hear more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. There is not a shortage of content for you guys to indulge in on this channel. And on that note, be sure to check me out Sunday for that live reaction of ReZero. I can't wait to see you guys then. As I always say, you guys can be anywhere on YouTube right now if you chose to listen to me. And I really appreciate that. So thanks for stopping by. On that note, it's your boy Infrared signing out. See you soon.